Metroidvania games come dime a dozen over at Kickstarter, but what if the game promises souls like combat, 250 plus craftable items, 60 plus enemies, 20 deadly bosses, and a skill tree to remind us all of Path of Exile. I'm Dan, and this is Mandragora. Yep, I know what you're thinking, but this is the game, not the lethal screaming plant in Harry Potter. Let's continue, shall we? All right, let's be straight and honest. I had already backed this game based on what I've seen over at Twitter when developer Primal Game Studio reached out and offered me to play this pre-alpha. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. At least that is how I imagine they discussed sharing this with me. Welcome to Fail Doom. Since it's a pre-alpha, we are currently rocking some default skills such as the Witcher 3 Igni kind of cone of fire and firewall. One skill I will use later in a feeble attempt to kill a kind of big boss enemy. End results may vary. Another Witcher inspired skill, flaming weapon. Wait, I have to show you the beauty with a sword. And flame slash, two of my favorite ones in this setup. And of course a plain shield setup for you insane people that need a real challenge. I feel an only shield no damage run coming up in the future. Are you ready for some heavy name dropping? Inspiration is said to come from Castlevania's way of exploration, Dark Souls combat, I could have figured that one out, Witcher 3's emotional storytelling, no unicorn included, and Ori and the Will of the Wisp, a beautiful art style. Oh, I just love that game, just look at it. Now we can get a hint of the exploration, combat and art style as we dive into the early version of the game and I have to agree to previous statement and it leaves me curious about how the story will be told in the final game. But will it all be enough to get your support? Let's find out! So why are we here fighting monsters? Good question since the story is still shrouded in a veil of secrecy, but my guess is that since we are a mercenary, we are here to clear out the rats in the basement, your classic bread and butter newbie starter RPG mission. Can't ever say though that I've ever seen a rat of this size, but besides some expected misclicks, we come out victorious. And while we're there, we stumble upon this lovely family. <laughs> oh lord, that is a special <laughs> look to put it mildly. Oh, and they have cousins. Cue the Transylvanian banjo music. Now I was bold over at Twitter and said I like enemies that dodge a lot. Now after I fought this one and died many 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 times, after a few wins and understanding of his movements pattern, I have to agree to my previous statement. Lucky for me, right? And no matter how much I boost health and stamina, stamina is always my greatest enemy, here highlighted in green all over the screen. The enemies I faced are challenging but fair, sure. There are some simple mindless simple pattern enemies that you can read quite easily. It's like roll, hit, 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 roll. But they can also prove to be just the right amount of annoying to make you almost want to see how far your controller can fly. But, but there are of course those with the complex movesets, but what they all share in true Souls-like fashion is that they will send you to the afterlife if you make the tiniest slightest mistake. So let's have a look at fighting the Grim Caretaker, the closer we can come to a boss in this alpha. For some odd reason, I had to try if I could use Firewall to take him down. No need to ask me why in the comments, please. I will spare you the full six minutes embarrassing combat, but I can safely say after running out of every precious resource and still have to fight him, Firewall is not the way to go, all right? Hitting him in the end was like hitting a raging bull with a wet pool noodle. If you are afraid that my gameplay looks too simple for your veteran souls like heart, rest assured that a new game plus mode is promised upon release, including new item sets, rings and weapons, and of course new difficult levels. Sounds amazing, right? Now we can't have a 2.5D side-scrolling action RPG without some environmental hazard right, so even if these arrows seem like the most chilled out challenge, the next one is just pure evil from the developers, and for that I love you and despise you a tiny bit, but mostly love you. Just a thing of beauty. And as in a, a true Metrovania, there will be skills that you need to acquire to be able to continue exploring new areas. Like this one, I'm missing a good whip to swing over. Where is Belmont when I need him? But even the climbing looks well polished and works well without you jumping to your death more than once or twice while playing. The art style is something I fell for early on, especially how your skills are drawn and we can expect dark forests, deadly swamps, abandoned dungeons, frozen mountains and burning deserts. 
And if they all have this unique but beautiful grim look, with your skills being the beacon of light, I think we all have a great time figuring out which of these four classes will be our favorite to play. Even though we can't dive deeper into the skill tree in this alpha, each class has its own separate part of the talent tree. Now with that said, you can still create mixed classes to fit your own playstyle, and for me that is way more fun. The developers have a good example with a heretic that combines their fire magic with forbidden blood magic to pure evil from the face of the earth. Now, the only thing that would top that would be a spellbinder in a heavy armor with a magical enhanced robust battle hammer. I hope to see more exciting builds in the future that people would share when the game goes live. Future content tips for expiring content creators free of charge. You can, as expected, spend your point in the skill tree on basic attributes like knowledge, strength or endurance, or on passive talents like finish them, which add a third more powerful attack to your basic attack sequence. But my favorite for now have to be Vengeance, which deal all damage received back to the attacker. My kind of skill since I get hit a lot and I deserve a payback. So how do you create a good soundtrack that breathes darkness, despair, and at the same time highlight a journey of good and evil? You take help from the metal music scene, and for this Greek pioneer of Greek metal, Christos Antonio, fits perfectly. Just have a listen to this. <laughs> Pretty awesome, right? Pet the Cats is a community goal on Kickstarter journey, but with the look of the game, I think we can expect cats like this. Jeez, that is a special one. Big on, Satan. Mandragora is the love child of some of the strongest elements from the best Souls-like and Metrovania games out there right now, all set in a beautiful and grim lethal world that will continue to try to kill you every second you spend there, and you will want to continue with a smile on your face into another deadly encounter over and over again. Besides the game already mentioned as inspiration, I see hints of Blasphemous, Salt and Sanctuary, and one of my favorites called the Hero Slayer. So skip next week's Friday pizza or Friday beer and head on over to Kickstarter and support the devs. Link in the description below. I'm Dan, and it's been an absolute joy showing you this game. If you stay a while, I will show you another game I think you will like in the upcoming end screen. Until next time, stay safe and stay awesome.